Welcome to Whiskey Cast, cask strength conversation featuring news and interviews from the world of whiskey. I'm Mark Gillespie. This is episode number 957 for June 19th, 2022. Coming up in a few minutes. We're one of the only cities in America that even has an official cocktail. And as far as I know, we're the only city in America that has a state legislature uh, declaration of having a city cocktail. A lot of other cities have like city council resolutions or mayoral resolutions, uh, but it's pretty rare that you get the whole state government involved, which is kind of cool. This week is Sazerac Cocktail Week in New Orleans, and we'll visit the Sazerac House in the Crescent City to get a preview from Matt Ray, along with some of the history behind one of whiskey's oldest cocktails. That's just ahead on Whiskey Cast in depth along with your voice, Behind the Label, and June's Whiskey Club of the Month. The news is next on this week's Whiskey Cast. Gabriel Cartarella from Dewar's back to tell you about an exciting new offering. Father's Day is just around the corner, and if your dad likes whiskey, there's a good chance he likes golf. Here's what's exciting. Dewar's is the official Scotch whiskey of the U.S. Open, and our custom bottle program is back for another year. So head on over to Dewars.com to make Dad the perfect Father's Day gift. And now, a message from Robin Redbreast. A pair of socks, a book, some suspect ties, a compact tool kit. Oh, another book. And a shaving kit. Actually, I could do with that. But anyway, sometimes you've got to take things into your own hands. Go on, treat yourself. Happy Father's Day from Redbreast, proud sponsor of WhiskeyCast. Let's get started with the news. It's brought to you by the Dalmore. Bottle supplies in Scotland are facing a shortage because of labor disputes involving one of Scotland's largest glassmakers. Workers at three OI glass facilities have been staging a series of rolling strikes this week after rejecting the company's proposed contract offer and plan to continue the strikes until they get a better deal. Unite the Union claims OI's offer of a 4% pay hike is actually a pay cut given the current 11% inflation rate. The company's three plants in Scotland supply bottles for Diageo, Chivas Brothers, Bacardi, and other drinks companies. Old Forester's Jackie Zycan announced this week that she's leaving her post at Brown Foreman. As master taster, she's worked alongside master distiller Chris Morris to create the various Old Forester expressions. She's leaving for what is being termed new opportunities, but we won't find out what that means until after she officially leaves Old Forester on July 1st. There's a new resource for distillery tourism in the U.S. The Distilled Spirits Council has launched Destination Distillery. It's an online guide that will let travelers find out about distilleries that offer tours and tastings, among other things. Chris Swanger is the CEO of Discus. What we want it to be is a one-stop shop for great consumers and anybody that is visiting any state in the country They can go to DestinationDistillery.com and find out where their closest distillery is and learn all about it. And it will be a great tool in Discus's efforts to showcase the economic vitality and the contribution and the important role hospitality and tourism plays in our nation's economy. And it's going to include all distilleries, not just Discus members? All distilleries, all distilleries. This is about being inclusive in showcasing the strength of our industry, county by county, community by community, showcasing all the great distilleries around the country. The website is DestinationDistillery.com. We'll include a link in the show notes for this episode at WhiskeyCast.com. Here's another sign that whiskey tourism is coming back after the pandemic. The Kentucky Distillers Association is postponing plans to revive its annual Kentucky Bourbon Affair Fantasy Camp until 2023. That's because the KDA's member distilleries are already booked up for months on tours, and many don't have the staff available to create special experiences for the Bourbon Affair. It hasn't taken place since 2019 because of the pandemic. Finally, the Scotch Whiskey Association has long been known for being aggressive when someone steps on the bounds of Scotch Whiskey place names. Now, the Irish Whiskey Association is starting to throw some elbows in the legal arena as well. 
The association's first challenge was a cease and desist letter to Brooklyn's Kings County Distillery for selling what it labeled a, quote, Irish-style American whiskey. The IWA claims that could cause confusion with Irish whiskeys, something Kings County co-founder Colin Spellman disputed in his response. He said Irish can refer to a country, a whiskey, or a culture. However, he did acknowledge that they pulled the offending whiskey off of the Kings County website, not because of the IWA's letter, but because they sold out of it. You can keep up with the latest whiskey news all week long at whiskeycast.com and on our social media feeds. The news is brought to you by the Dalmore. Hello, Richard Patterson here, master distiller, master blender for the Dalmore. You know, whenever the team and I are in the world sharing our exceptional single malt, we like to keep in touch with Mark Gillespie and the latest news from Whiskey Cast. Time now for the Whiskey Cast calendar of events brought to you by Catoctin Creek Distilling. The Black Bourbon Society's Open Door Tour heads south to Orlando, Florida this coming weekend from the 23rd through the 25th. Washington, D.C.'s Filson Store will host a Women Who Whiskey tasting of Westland whiskeys on Saturday the 25th. The Aaron Malt and Music Festival also takes place this coming weekend on Scotland's Isle of Arran. The Whiskey Exchange hosts a Scotch whiskey tasting at its Covent Garden Store in London June 30th. Kiddush Fest is that same night at the Hudson Yards Synagogue in New York City. We'll kick off July on the 2nd with the National Whiskey Festival in Inverness, Scotland. McTeers has its next whiskey auction on July 8th in Glasgow. Whiskey Live Sydney is July 15th and 16th in Australia. And the debut of Whiskey Live USA in Nashville, Tennessee is set for July 23rd and 24th. If you're responsible for organizing a whiskey event, let us know about it. We'll add it to the searchable calendar at whiskeycast.com. It's brought to you by Catoctin Creek Distilling, makers of the Virginia Rye Whiskey. You'll find their Roundstone Rye at fine whiskey shops in 26 U.S. states, three continents, and online. Visit the new buyvirginiarye.com site for more details, and please drink responsibly. And now, a message from Robin Redbreast. A thoughtful gift is hard work. What you need is a go-to multi-purpose gift for all occasions. A bottle of Redbreast can say, enjoy every minute, they grow up so fast. And equally nails, apologies for the back pain, I should have just hired a moving company. Proud sponsor of WhiskeyCast, Redbreast. Pass it on. WhiskeyCast In-Depth is brought to you by Mortlock and the Classic Malts lineup. It's easy to celebrate a cocktail week in New Orleans, sort of like every day can be National Bourbon Day if you're motivated enough. But this week is Sazerac Cocktail Week in New Orleans and elsewhere, and that is worth celebrating since the Sazerac was one of the earliest cocktail recipes on record. The Sazerac Company owns Buffalo Trace and other whiskey brands, but its roots are based in New Orleans and you'll find them at the corner of Canal and Magazine at Sazerac House. I stopped by for a visit with Matt Ray, who's in charge of the visitor experience at Sazerac House. First of all, let's talk about the history of Sazerac House before we talk about Sazerac Cocktail Week. This is a a relatively new development in uh, the French Quarter, right? Oh, yeah. We've been open since October of 2019. We are uh, a six-story building, but we're a free cocktail museum where we tell the story of New Orleans through the lens of the cocktail. And the whole goal here is we're here to demystify spirits and cocktails for people. So the idea is that we want people to leave with an idea of how to make a good drink at home and that it's easy and to know what they want when they go out to a bar to order a Manhattan or a Sazerac cocktail. And we tell the story of our company and use our products to tell that story of New Orleans and our company. But we've been open since October 2019 in this really beautiful renovated building on the corner of Canal and Magazine downtown. And we're named for the original Sazerac House Coffee House, which was a bar in the French Quarter that was built in 1852. It did not survive prohibition like so many other bars, but it is now a historic parking garage that you can walk around for free. And pay to park in. And also pay to park in. (laughs) 
What else do you offer here besides cocktail education? We have a working distillery downstairs, so we're actually making Sazerac rye whiskey. Uh, we make Peychaud's bitters here in small batches that even the local bars like to use. We offer events and classes and cheese tastings and chocolate pairings. We also have an event space on the fourth floor for private events and parties and also more education classes. And then we have offices upstairs if you just want to come visit us and say hi. Oh, not to mention a retail spot downstairs if you're looking to take some whiskey home. And you have everything from the basic Buffalo Trace and, of course, Sazerac Rye to uh, I saw a bottle of The Last Drop down there. Oh, yeah. Last Drop is our uh, not only rare, because rare doesn't necessarily mean good. Like the whiskey I make at home is rare. It doesn't mean it's worth tasting. But Last Drop specializes in rare and uh, unique seminal offerings that can't be replicated but yeah like really cool bottlings of uh, cognac that was rescued from the nazi invasion in france that was distilled in like the 30s let's talk about sazerac uh-huh. cocktail week here let me scoot in a little bit closer just so i'm not reaching so far away um, tell me about sazerac cocktail week because this is sort of your highlight of the year right Actually, it just recently started being our highlight of the year. It's only our third year. It's actually only our second year doing Cesar Cocktail Week. It started out as a day uh, three years ago because June 23rd, 2008 was the year that the Sazerac became the official cocktail of the city of New Orleans. So it started as a day celebration of the Sazerac Cocktail, and it turned into a week last year, which was a, a really fun celebration that went from Monday to Sunday. And now it is in its second year of Sazerac Cocktail Week, and it's probably bigger than it was last year, which was a a big to-do. But we like to celebrate the Sazerac Cocktail because not only is it the official cocktail of the city of New Orleans, but it is such a a beautiful expression of the history of New Orleans and the cultures here. And we're one of the only cities in America that even has an official cocktail. And as far as I know, we're the only city in America that has a state legislature legislature. Uh, declaration of having a city cocktail. A lot of other cities have like city council resolutions or mayoral resolutions, uh, but it's pretty rare that you get the whole state government involved, which is kind of cool. And let's go into the history of the Sazerac cocktail. Where did it come from? The Sazerac cocktail actually has been around in a lot of different variations since the 1840s. There was a really cool article that we found from the Times-Picayune going back to 1843 that talked about... uh, you can come to New Orleans and order what's called a cue de Chanticleer, which is like a cute word for, you know, a French cocktail that was uh, brandy, sugar, water, bitters, and absinthe, which is basically like a, a Sazerac. And then over time, it would evolve into going from a cognac and brandy cocktail to a rye whiskey drink as kind of rye took over in America and in New Orleans because we were becoming less French and Spanish and more American. And Americans drank rye. We didn't drink a lot of cognac and brandy. And then it became the officially named Sazerac cocktail sometime around 1900 or 1901 when it became bottled. And it was kind of other cool thing about the Sazerac cocktail. It was the very first bottled cocktail that tourists could take home as a souvenir. How is it made? The Sazerac cocktail? Yeah. What's the official Sazerac house recipe for the Sazerac cocktail? So uh, the official recipe, because it's actually, I tell you what's fun about Sazerac too, is that it's one of the few trademarked cocktails, um, like the Dark and Stormy, for instance. Um, So the Sazerac cocktail officially is three dashes of Peychaud's bitters. It is one sugar cube. And you muddle that sugar cube in three dashes of Peychaud's bitters in a rocks glass. You add an ounce and a half of Sazerac rye whiskey, which is kind of our flagship rye for the company. Uh, I give it a quick stir to dissolve the sugar. And then you add ice and you stir it. And basically what you've made is an old-fashioned, like whiskey, sugar, water, bitters. And the thing that makes it kind of a cool New Orleans twist is that we were adding a dash of absinthe to our cocktails in New Orleans and making what was called an improved cocktail. So you take another glass that's been chilling, you dump out the ice, and you give it a rinse of herb saint, which replaced absinthe in New Orleans in the 1930s. So you dump out that herb saint, you pour in your chilled old-fashioned mixture, and then you add a lemon twist to that, and you've got a Sazerac. So it's an old-fashioned done New Orleans style is the easiest way to describe it. What events will you be doing during Sazerac Cocktail Week? So we've got, uh, we're completely revamping the whole building. So from beginning to end, we are telling you kind of a cool narrative of every single ingredient in the Sazerac Cocktail. So we tell you the story of bitters 
Uh, everything is going to have these like insane lush decorations and ton- it'll look like a very, very fancy wedding. The fanciest wedding I've ever been to. Uh, so we're going to do a tasting of bitters. Uh, we tell the story of lemons and how Italian immigrants bought, brought those to New Orleans and used them in cocktails. So we're going to have a featured uh, lemonade that we make here, which we're really proud of. So then we go into the story of sugar. So we go over all the different types of sugar, all the different ways sugar is made. People get to actually taste raw sugar cane to see what it tastes like before it's turned into sugar and rum. Then they get to taste uh, this really cool chocolate made by a local chocolatier from, uh, it's called Piety and Desire, but we, he used Herb Saint, the anise liqueur that you need to make the Sazerac, and he made these Herb Saint bonbons. So we're actually be serving like Herb Saint chocolate here. And then you get to taste a Sazerac cocktail, which is a culmination of all these ingredients into its uh, the, 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 the quintessence, the end-all, be-all, the piece de resistance. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'm from Alabama. I barely speak English, but I'm pretty sure it's piece de resistance or something, give or take. Uh, and then they taste Sazerac rye whiskey on its own in the distillery. So you get to taste kind of the product that we make downstairs. So you work through the cocktail. You go through a bunch of beautiful decorations. We're going to have a a band and DJs. uh, And we actually have a virtual class that we're teaching where I go over how to make a Sazerac at home, plus all this history that I'm telling you about, uh, in addition to having just like a big to-do party. And it'll be really fun. And there's a charitable element to this too, right? Yeah, actually. So Sazerac House is donating uh, a minimum $10,000, but probably closer to $50,000 by the end of it is our goal to what's called Feed the Second Line. So Feed the Second Line is a local charity that is here to support the culture bearers of New Orleans because all these people that bring culture to New Orleans, uh, the musicians, the second liners, the people that dress up and dance in the French Quarter, the Mardi Gras Indians which is our own unique kind of Mardi Gras uh, cultural heritage here. A lot of those people do that work for free just because they love it. So the idea of Feed the Second Line is that we want to support them and we want to make sure that they've got enough food to eat for their families and they've got um, gigs and places to go get paid to play their music so they can support their families and have a career and a life. So the things that make New Orleans the most beautiful and entertaining and fun for people visiting out of town, Feed the Second Line wants to make that a more stable life for those people so it can be um, more equitable. Uh, so a big charitable part of Sazerac Cocktail Week is donating $1 uh, for every bottle sold. And actually, another fun thing that we're doing is we're partnering with over 60 bars nationwide to every time they sell a cocktail, uh, not only will they donate a dollar to Fee the Second Line, but Sazerac Company matches that uh, up to $50,000. So that's our goal, is to get the whole country excited about the Sazerac cocktail and Sazerac, uh, Sazerac's connection with New Orleans and New Orleans culture. And then as soon as Sazerac cocktail week is over, you've got tales of the cocktail coming into town. Oh, yeah, that's going to be wonderful. It's a, a 20th anniversary, and it's actually the first time it's been back in like two years in person because, man, COVID shut it down. Uh, it was really sad, but this is the first time it's been back in a couple years because they tried doing... Or they not tried doing, they did do a virtual element the last couple of years, and they did such a good job, and they worked so hard on it, and it was really beautiful, but I think everyone can agree it's just not the same. It's Having a Zoom conference is not the same as being surrounded by loved ones and your peers and uh, people in the industry and doing a live whiskey tasting. So it's at the Ritz-Carlton down the street. We're hosting a whole day of events here for it, and we're doing, actually, we're inviting bartenders and people in the industry to come by whenever they're free to take a free tour, and we're doing events that whole week. Um, Sazerac House is actually sponsoring a talk that I'm giving there on uh, education in the bar, like what works for consumer and staff education, uh, which we're really excited about. But we're doing a lot for Tales this year, which I could, could not be more thrilled about. You mentioned your virtual class during Sazerac Cocktail Week. How can people access it? It's actually available. The link will be available online on SazeracHouse.com. Sazerac Cocktail Week starts Monday and runs through next Sunday. And we've posted a link for Sazerac House in the show notes for this episode at WhiskeyCast.com. That's WhiskeyCast In-Depth. It's brought to you by Mortlock, whiskey's best-kept secret. Hidden away for decades in some of the world's most famous Scotch whiskeys, comes a single malt inspired by an original for a fortunate few. Discover the entire Mortlock lineup at malts.com. 
The one I'm tasting this week department is brought to you by Sagamore Spirit. And to be very honest, it should be the what I'm not tasting this week department, since I haven't had the chance to taste anything this week because of COVID. But at least I haven't lost my senses of taste and smell. I am hoping to get slowly back into tasting in the coming days, but until then, you can check out my searchable list of more than 3,300 different whiskeys from around the world at whiskeycast.com. Our tasting notes are brought to you by Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey. They're reviving the tradition of Maryland-style rye at their waterfront distillery in Baltimore. Their premium canned cocktails are a refreshing, convenient option while you're playing a round of golf, sitting poolside, or spending a day at the beach with flavors such as lemon tea fizz and honey paloma. Now available in markets across the U.S., you can find them at a retailer near you by visiting sagamorespirit.com slash find rye. Please drink responsibly. There's no better gift for Father's Day than a great bottle of scotch whiskey. Many of the values that Dad teaches are the same ones that go into making a great scotch. Things like patience, hard work, attention to detail, and pride in a job well done. For those dads that are into golf or whiskey, give them a custom bottle of Jewers, the official scotch whiskey of the U.S. Open. This year, the 122nd U.S. Open will be held June 16th through 19th at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, with the final round on Father's Day. That makes Jewers an extra special gift. Why stop there? Show even more love with a custom bottle of Dewar's 12-year-old, 15-year-old, or 18-year-old. Visit Dewar's.com, get personalized labels, and custom bottles delivered right to your door. Do it now, though, because Dad also taught you to be on time. It's time to announce June's Whiskey Club of the Month, and congratulations to the Taipei Whiskey Club in Taiwan. Founder and President Daniel Brown sent this email to nominate his club. The club has been meeting about once a month since December 8th of 2016. Including myself, there were three founding members. We've grown through lulls and spirits to just over 100 members, with half as many waiting to join. We're made up of those new on their whiskey journeys, those well along on their journeys, and plenty of folk in between. Reputations are hard won and easily lost, so anyone interested in becoming a member must come to at least one meetup in person to be considered for full membership. This allows prospective members a chance to see if they enjoy our company, too. For each meetup, we usually have between 10 to 20-some attendees, and we meet in several bars around Taipei, each one suited to the different needs of our meetup. Although, with a recent spike in COVID cases, for the safety of members and our families, we have paused in-person meetups for the next wee while until things calm down. Still, we have virtual meetups to tide us over until then. Daniel also included a link to the club's Facebook page, and we'll add that to the Whiskey Club's page at the WhiskeyCast website. We're also going to send Daniel two dozen WhiskeyCast Glencairn glasses to use when their in-person meetups start once again. Now, if you're in a Whiskey Club and would like to nominate your club for Club of the Month honors, just do like Daniel did and use the contact form at WhiskeyCast.com to get in touch with us. Tell us a bit about your club, and if you have a website or are active on social media, we'll be glad to add a link on the Whiskey Club's page at our website so other like-minded whiskey lovers can find you. Once again, congratulations to the Taipei Whiskey Club, our Whiskey Club of the Month, and thanks to Glencairn Crystal for helping us honor whiskey clubs around the world. Let's open up the inbox now for Your Voice, presented by Scarabus Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Thanks again to everyone who has sent along good wishes as I recover from COVID. Got this email from Johan van Dijk in Belgium this weekend. Heard the COVID-19 virus found its way to the dry town of Haddonfield. Hope you get well soon. I've been enjoying your podcast for several years now, and as a sales rep, I usually listen to it during my time on the road to my next customer. In July, my family will be visiting your beautiful country starting in Las Vegas and ending up after about 2,800 kilometers with our rented RV in San Francisco. As a single malt lover, I'm eager to learn about bourbon. My knowledge doesn't go much further than Jack Daniels and Jim Beam. Any advice for a distillery to visit or bourbon to taste or buy while I'm in San Francisco for the last four days of our trip? 
Thanks for your advice, and you're welcome to pass by any time when you're in Belgium. Although we are a small country, we make some good single malts over here like the Gouden Corollas. Best regards, and take care, Johan. Thank you, Johan. I passed on a few suggestions to him in an email, but I'd love to add your feedback, too. What Western distilleries should he and his family try to visit, and which bourbons should he try while he's in San Francisco? Share your comments with us either on social media or by email, and I'll pass them along to Johan. If you have something you'd like to share with whiskey lovers around the world, you can always find me on social media. Look for WhiskeyCast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or just email me. The address is comments at whiskeycast.com. Your voice is presented by Scarabus, the Isla single malt from Hunter Lang & Company that celebrates all of Isla's natural gifts in one bottle. Only those who seek shall find Scarabus. Start your search at hunterlang.com. Let's close out the show now with Behind the Label, our look at the history, science, and people who make whiskey unique. It's brought to you by Writer's Tears. They'll be raising a few glasses to peace at this week's World Whiskey Forum in Denmark. It's being held at Stowning Distillery. And you may remember our stories in the past about a small rocky island on the border between Canada and Greenland. Back in February, Stowning threatened to stop distilling until Canada and Denmark resolved their decades of disputes over control of Hans Island. Every so often, the Canadians would leave their flag and a bottle of Canadian whiskey on the island to claim the island for Canada. And shortly after that, the Danes would go over, replace the flag with theirs, take the whiskey, and leave behind a bottle of schnapps instead. Now, the conflict never got violent, but the two countries have finally agreed to split Hans Island Solomon-like. It turns out there's a ravine running through the uninhabited island that makes a natural dividing line. That means Stowning can focus on making whiskey instead of peace again. And props to the distillers who figured out a peaceful solution to the problem, no doubt, over a glass of whiskey. If there's something you'd like to see us look at on an upcoming episode, just use the contact form at whiskeycast.com to get in touch with us. Behind the Label is brought to you by Writer's Tears. Writer's Tears Copper Pot an 18th century style of premium Irish whiskey, blended from single pot still and single malt. Like yourself, it's one of life's treasured rarities, and what's rare is wonderful. Writer's Tears Copper Pot. That's all for this edition of Whiskey Cast. You'll find links for the stories in this episode in our show notes at whiskeycast.com. That's also where you'll find the latest whiskey news, my tasting notes, the calendar of events, the whiskey photo of the week, and of course, a complete archive of all of our past episodes that goes all the way back to 2005. Get in touch with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at WhiskeyCast. The email address is comments at whiskeycast.com. And now, a message from Robin Redbreast. Small batch. How would you describe it? It's like an Irishman's understanding of baseball. Extremely limited. Proud sponsor of Whiskey Cast. Redbreast. Pass it on. Dewar's is the official Scotch whiskey of the U.S. Open, which concludes on Father's Day. So give Dad a custom bottle of Dewar's 12, 15, or 18 year at Dewar's.com. Then enjoy the tournament together. Until next time, friends, stay curious. Whiskey Cast is a production of Cast Strength Media, copyright 2022, and comes to you from the charming, yet regrettably dry town of Haddonfield, New Jersey. I'm Mark Gillespie, reminding you that when you drink, please drink responsibly. Thanks for listening.